Well, hello, my beautiful Virgo. Welcome to my channel. This is Baba Jolie here with your Twin Flame reading for the end of October, right through the end of November 2024. I've already cleansed your space and have meditated on your cards. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all your wonderful likes, shares, and subscribes. I am truly grateful for all your beautiful energy. Just a little reminder, though, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one -one reading, just so you're aware. Also, please be mindful, scammers are about pretending to be me and lots of other tarot readers. I do not do personal readings, and I will never reach out to you personally to offer one. Also, I will never ask you for money, e-gifts, or donations. So if anyone masquerading as me asks for anything at all, please report them or ignore them. It is a scam, okay? Let's move straight on with your reading. I'm going to cleanse your space hourly, so please be mindful there's going to be three loud sounds. Let us begin. Okay, my beautiful Virgo, this is your Twin Flame reading for those twins who are currently in separation. I'm going to get all of your cards first before I connect to an outcome. The first pile will be your protagonist energy, second pile will be your person's energy, and the third pile is the unified energy of how things come together. So let us begin. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Virgo? What do they need to know? Can you please guide them for their highest good? What are they meant to be aware of regarding this Twin Flame connection at this present moment in time? Time. Can you please illuminate the way? What are they meant to be aware of? What are they meant to see at this time? So we have incompatibilities there, but we also have surrendering for your person. So I feel um, there is a bit of a stalemate going on in this particular twin flame connection. And of course, we have the waiting game there. So that's what you and your person are trapped in at this moment in time. Now, I would say it's very important to recognize that if anyone is mentally, physically, or emotionally abusive, that is not a twin flame connection. That's more likely to be a false flame connection. And it will waste your wonderful time and drain you of your beautiful love. Now, twin flames, they are magnetic, and you're drawn to your person like a moth to a flame almost. It's obsessive sometimes, and do remember that both parties feel the same when you meet each other. Uh, it is like a mirrored experience. You both meet each other in the same vibration. So when you look at your twin, you're actually looking at aspects within yourself that need to be healed. Things get amplified in a twin flame connection. Remember, a twin flame journey, it's more of a spiritual awakening rather than an actual physically romantic relationship. It's a process that prepares us to release lower vibrational energy, which keeps us stuck in fear, addictive patterns, unhealthy attachments, um, codependency, trust issues, insecurities. It's basically an intense inner vibrational transformation but it is a period where you go through a journey of discovery that you must do alone. And that's why the twin flame journey triggers both parties in order to really look at the stuff that has remained unhealed. Um, it's not a game, it's an energetic exchange. And uh, there tends to be a certain dynamic in a twin flame connection. Please fast forward this bit if you've heard this before. This is for all those people who are coming to my channel for the first time. Welcome, of course, and uh, welcome as well. And thank you to all of those wonderful subscribers who uh, continue to return. I'm so grateful for you all, um, but I'm just going to give a bite-sized idea of what it means to be in Twin Flame Connection whilst I shuffle your cards, because it's basically a sacred union that forms as a result of shared difficulty and pain. So both parties, they tend to have experienced some level of trauma or difficulty before they even meet. And these are things that, you know, sometimes get left unhealed, and then uh, both parties have to remain separate for a certain period of time to resolve those issues so they can choose healthier decisions in relationships or healthier paths in relationships and come together in acceptance but also in a oneness. Now, twin flames, they tend to have the dynamic chaser runner separation period on purpose. Uh, there is a pause on purpose so both parties, they connect to their true life mission and purpose, shall we say, and uh, each twin has a mission in 
this lifetime. You have to uh, fulfill a soul contract. And the chaser tends to be the one who is more willing to surrender to the union. And the runner looks in that mirror. Remember, when you look in the mirror, you see all the aspects within self. Uh, and you project energy as well in Twin Flame Dynamic. Uh, they see all the things within themselves that they've been running away from their whole life, okay? The twin flame dynamic actually reflects back to you your greatest strengths, but also your greatest weaknesses. And it's not a case of waiting for them to accept your love, not at all. Even though it feels like a rejection in a twin flame dynamic, it basically is two people wrestling within themselves you know, the inner battle of love, acceptance, uh, feeling lovable. Most twins, they have a uh, an energy of, um, oh my gosh, my guide said go again. So I have to honor the energy I'm channeling at the same time as scrying, doing your reading. Uh, both parties have to honor each other's journey. I always say do not wait for your twin because um, the timeline you could be waiting for your twin forever. It's not about waiting. It's about focusing on your own spiritual path and coming together in union when the moment is right. The universe will always bring you back together to try again. And um, for some of you, some of you will step away from the twin flame journey because it is actually a difficult journey to accept. So uh, please apply it to your situation. Uh, this reading is to check in with the energies to see how both parties are evolving on their path and how things can be resolved. So uh, both parties need to basically accept that their happiness does not tie up with another person. And, um, you know, Twin Flames, there tends to be abandonment issues, but also some self-loathing that has to be resolved within that person before you can truly surrender to love. Because if you don't love yourself fully, remember the cup of love starts for the self first, if you don't love yourself fully, then of course, it's very hard to extend love to another person. And you may be dealing with someone like that right now. The devil card indicates that this uh, relationship is in a period where it's stagnant, it's stuck, and your first card there is incompatibilities. Now, my beautiful Virgo, I feel like you tried everything, but this connection, this person blew hot and cold, okay? And I feel like you can't fight this anymore. There's an energy here you love, okay? We've got the Page of Cups, so I feel like you offered so much love, care, devotion, your whole heart to this person, and you wanted to settle down. You've got the tree there. It represents marriage, commitment, longevity, I feel, you know, you really offered a healthy space for this person to thrive in your love, but they're caught up in something here right now um, where they uh, are always on the run from something. So I have to check in to see what that is. But right now, I feel like you are the catalyst for change. And I tell you why, because this card indicates that right now you're looking more at the incompatibilities in this connection, which means you've taken a step back. I've got an ace of pentacles here for you that's come out. Some of you are thinking about moving on and finding a new person or you're opening yourself up to new love because aces tend to represent new energy or something evolving in some way because you can't do this anymore. You know, you can't keep investing in something where you don't know where you stand and it's painful. I also feel this energy connects to you where sometimes you want to offer your love, care, devotion, reach out to this person, but at the same time you feel there's a cycle of repeat here where it ends up the same way. So I feel like you're kind of like done with this and there's this feeling of icing it out or icing this person out. So uh, I feel like sometimes you have an inner battle of your own going on here where you want to be with the person. There's a lot of passion, intensity, but at the same time, there's a logical sort of detachment from this connection. And some of you may have even wondered, does the twin flame connection even exist? Did this person actually feel anything for you? Did they ever love you? Well, the answer is yes. You know, we've got the surrendering and uh, they've got, I mean, this pile, if I can get this card up for you to show you, uh, this pile is how they feel about you. They see you as a divine partnership. They see you as someone who raises their vibrations. Okay. I feel like uh, you've changed something within this person, but it's given them a lot to think about. They tend to be always on the run is what I'm being given. Um, 
But right now, this is your vibration, which means you are the catalyst for change in this relationship by withdrawing your energy. But I feel it is an inner battle because there is a push and pull here. Now, I'm just going to read the card. It says, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, find someone you're compatible with is a key to avoiding a very challenging connection. So a lot of you are like, okay, you found your twin. Why does it have to be so challenging? Do these incompatibilities represent the fact that you're never going to be together? And why is it that twins cannot really communicate how they feel and just say, look, I'm not ready for love right now? Or, uh, you know, maybe they have something deep down that is a wound that they need to try and process before they can truly surrender to love. But um, it's often important to recognize that, you know, twin flames, they have to do with our idea of what it means to love and sometimes individual experiences of what it means to love comes from parenthood or you know guardianship when we are younger when we're a child so if we witness any form of dysfunction or parents or guardians um, you know being argumentative or separating or cheating all of those things that is our first foundation of what it means to love and that can actually influence how a person loves when they get older sometimes they actually seek the drama that they witnessed when they were younger and they always cause some sort of self-sabotage to create that level of intensity so they feel alive, so they feel that it is love. But you're looking for something that is healthier. You're looking for something that is stable, that is pure. And um, I feel there's an energy here as well that twin flames, they often... Um, Okay, and it's it stems from a sense of immaturity, of course. I want that to be known, and I'm not here to give anyone an excuse or a way out. I'm here to understand what's going on in this particular twin flame connection. But, you know, there is an energy here that twin flames, they don't know how to articulate their feelings from a healthy place because they tend to have witnessed some sort of trauma or some sort of dysfunctional experience before they meet their twin. And twin flames, you know, they are deeply connected to each other. And that depth of love, that unconditional love actually triggers fearful emotions within them where they feel that they will lose that love. When someone actually truly understands them, sees them, and gets really deeply in, it's exposing and uh, they're fearful and those emotions sort of come to the surface and always are on their mind. So having conversations when someone is triggered and unhealed, they actually have an unhealed response to that conversation or to that emotion. So they perpetuate a cycle of either running away from it, they don't wanna face something. Remember, twin flames, they are mirrored behavior. They often project their fears onto the other person they're in denial, avoiding their feelings. I feel like this person, they were emotionally avoidant when you first met. They were not looking for love, but that means that that person is not in a healthy, mature vibration. So it's important for the separation to be occurring during that time so both parties can spiritually evolve. Um, so I feel it's very important to recognize that the twin flame, you can be with your twin flame, but it is a process. And it actually is a rewarding one once you both spiritually evolve, do all the healing work and come together. It's passionate, intense, it's otherworldly. And, you know, that person, once you overcome things, they will be by your side forever. But it's getting there that is the process because it's the inner battle. Doesn't mean that they're seeing other people. Doesn't mean that they don't want to be with you right now. It means they can't get out of their own way. There's a self-sabotaging pattern that they keep emulating. And until they really identify it and overcome it. They can't move past it. And you should not wait for that person. I want you to be aware of that. Time does not wait. So I feel it's very important right now where you recognize where you're at in your twin flame connection. But I feel, yes, it is blowing hot and cold. You're frustrated. You can't do this anymore. You're fed up of it ending in the same way. And it's almost like, and don't shoot the messenger when I say this. It's almost like when you're intensely wanting that person, they're blowing cold. And then when they're intensely coming towards you, you're blowing cold. So it's like this hot and cold back and forth going on in the twin flame connection because both of you haven't stabilized your energy of how you feel in this connection. Now, I feel like you, my beautiful Virgo, you gave so much to this. You love. I mean, you've got the marriage card there. This is the tree in the Lenormand deck, and that represents stability. 
longevity. But I also feel, you know, you're wanting a healthy relationship. You're more spiritually evolved. You've grown a lot through this experience. But also I feel when you met your person, you're also more spiritually evolved than they were at that time. Remember, we can only meet each other as deeply as we have met ourselves, okay? And uh, that's not an excuse. It's just an acknowledgement that we must accept people as they are and where they are on their journey, but we must also place them where they belong in ours, okay? Very important message right there. Now, um, this card indicates that, of course, you are choosing healthier options in your life. I also feel in this particular dynamic between you and your twin, there's something from childhood. There's something in the family structure that has in some way influenced this connection. So I'll get to it when I get to your person's energy, but I feel there is an energy of something repeating a cycle from something your person witnessed when they were younger, okay? Um, now, I'm not here to play the blame game. I'm not here to blame their parents or guardians or any of those things, uh, but I am here to acknowledge that we all make choices and we must stand by our choices. We must take full accountability for those choices and no excuses. So um, I will tap into their energy in a moment. We've got the page of cups there. Now, for some of you beautiful Virgos, uh, I definitely see that, you know, there is this energy that you love this person so much. It's almost like you feel, even if you've had love in the past, this person is your one true blue, passionate, intense love that's like crazy love, but also at the same time, it feels like all other loving experiences pale in comparison to this one. It almost feels like some sort of first love, but it's a different kind of first love, if that makes sense. So I feel like, of course, you're in love with this person. However, some of you beautiful Virgos have thought about meeting someone new or falling in love with a soulmate. Uh, pages can be new energy, uh, especially when it's partnered with an ace of pentacles there, ace of coins. So if you haven't started talking to someone new already, I feel like some of you will be, and you may have to make that decision as to whether you want to be with your twin or with a soulmate. It's your free will. We all have free will. So there's only one twin flame connection, of course, but you can have many soulmates. Uh, but I feel you love this person, but you protect your heart against your twin because of everything that's gone on before. Also, I feel there's a level here where you felt like you weren't really ready for this kind of love. Okay, this person is different. They're like outside your usual type or there's something different about this person where um, you're learning more about yourself, what you're capable of. It's almost like this person taught you something about yourself as well, okay? Um, well, there's definitely a highlight of an inner battle, the fight or flight energy. So perhaps this twin flame connection triggered both of you to be runners at the first, okay? Because I feel like both of you really were not looking for love. I feel like kind of crept up on you both here, even though it was intense and pure right from the very beginning. I get this energy with the page of cups here that you sent a message to this person, a message of love, and I feel... It didn't get the response you thought it would, okay? This person keeps this message and they look at it all the time. So whatever you wrote in that message, it really made an impact. But a lot of you are questioning, does this person love? Did they ever love? Is this a twin flame connection? Uh, was this a false flame? Uh, I feel I'll, the energy I'm tapping into right now, it's twin flame, okay? Now, um, I do see that you get a lot of attention, even if you don't notice it yourself, my beautiful Virgo. Uh, Ace of Pentacles, there is a new opportunity coming in here uh, for you to meet someone, soulmate energy, where uh, it's kind of like healthy from the very beginning, okay? So, of course, uh, a lot of people go, well, why wouldn't I take that then? Uh, of course, the level of intensity and passion, it's just different, and you know it's different. There's almost like a magnetic draw where you cannot stop thinking about your person, um, your twin flame, and it just feels like this person's on your mind a lot, even though you're trying to move on. You didn't want to move on, but I feel like this situation has left you with no choice right now. I feel a lot of you are focusing on your finances, you're focusing on um, 
success in your life. I also see here that there is a love token or a love gift that hasn't been given. So I can't tell right now, I've got to be honest with you, I can't tell if it's they have a gift for you that they've never given you or vice versa, but this will be a topic of conversation in the future. So I feel you and this person, there's still a conversation to be had, something left unsaid in this particular uh, connection. But you've got a lot of new energy here, so I feel like you're trying to move on, you can't do this anymore, you're so fed up of the push and pull, the hot and cold, the inconsistency of it. And you know, you've learned that life is too short. It's no time for games. And you may have felt that this was a game. However, humans, of course, as you know, because you're very astute, you're very good at body language and, you know, understanding people on a different level. That's why it's kept you in this, because you know that there is love, you know that there is passion, you know that there is substance to this. And that's why it's so hard to let go. So I do feel here um, that you have a message or something you want to say to this person, but because you've got this card here in compatibilities, I feel like you're hesitant about sending it. I feel like you have reached out. You tried everything you could to try and save this, but I feel um, it's been met with no avail. Okay, so I'm just going to pull one card before I move on to their energy as to what's going on here. Thank you so much. Because this is totally stuck in a stalemate energy right now, the star. And we got the chariot. So the star energy is of course all about healing. These are two major arcana cards, okay? So these two together indicate that you're focusing on your own healing journey and that is what will make progress. The chariot card is movement and improvement, but it's also about dedicating yourself to healing. That's what's going on in this particular twin flame journey. Uh, the star also reveals. So I feel you're learning stuff about yourself, but I feel also there is something you have yet to learn about this person. It's not that they've kept it a secret. I feel it's just something that they don't like to talk about to anybody. It's something that's off limits. We'll get there in a moment, but healing has to occur in this particular twin flame flame dynamic before it can move forward. Some of you are at a literal distance from your twin. Um, there may be a separation period by distance. And if that's the case, I feel you and your person will get over this. Um, I'm also seeing in the water, and it may be a sign or symbol of something that is relevant. I'm seeing a wishbone. Of course, this is a card that means you're aligning with wishes. Maybe that's why I'm seeing this, but I'm seeing a wishbone. You know, um, there's a tradition for some, you know, um, I don't eat meat, so, and there's no judgment here, but um, there's like a tradition for some holding the wishbone in two pinky fingers or something, making a wish and like snapping the wishbone. Uh, I think that's something that's coming out there. I mean, it could be that you're wishing to come together with your person or you're wishing that, you know, you can move on from this and be together, that there is improvement here, but this may be a sign or a symbol that you'll see over the next coming weeks that indicates you're about to hear from your twin. So look out for the sign of a wishbone. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to give you with that. It could be that this person bought you a gift, like a necklace or a bracelet that had a wishbone, gold or silver on there, um, or maybe it's something you gave them, or maybe it's something relevant to your twin flame connection. But I'm just going to leave that there because it may be too precise for everybody, but it's something that's coming through. It's like, make a wish. And it's like, but remember, both parties, there needs to be equality, because I feel there is an energy of reciprocity. There's an imbalance slightly in this connection. Now, um, I feel a lot of you also, my guide said, don't forget about the moving on part. So the chariot card represents moving forward, moving on. So the star energy basically means you wish to be with your person, but ultimately you feel that you're called to move on right now because you can't do this anymore. And uh, it feels like a lot of discomfort. I want to say a more strong word than that, but it also, what I'm channeling, uh, this strong word comes with an expletive, and I'm not going to go there, okay? But you know, because you feel. It's like, it's painful, okay? So um, let's get to their energy. We've got surrendering. I really want people to be aware that I describe twin flames like magnets, both identical in polarity, the push and pull. 
if they are identical in polarity, it means they cannot truly be together. There has to be that space in between. And that is the twin flame dynamic. There has to be a space. It's a rite of passage for both parties to focus on their own journey of discovery. Even famous people that you know who are together, there tends to be a bit of a separation period at some point before they come together. Not all, of course, because they're not all twin flames. But you may hear of people getting together. And, you know, then there's a separation period. Sometimes that person goes often, um, you know, dates a karmic, for example, and then they come back together with their twin. Uh, it doesn't always involve a karmic. I want you to be aware of that. And I don't see a third party situation going on in this connection. So I just want you to be aware that when the moment is right, the universe will bring you back together in union. But like magnets, if you remain in this position, then the magnets are always going to be in the same frequency. We are all energy, and that means it's always going to be a push and pull. If this magnet is the chaser and keeps reaching out to their twin, messaging or trying to make it work, then of course it's going to perpetuate a cycle. The energy remains the same because this magnet needs to change the frequency, put all that care, love and devotion inwards on their own true life's mission and purpose, their true north, and focus on self-love, self-care, healing. Um, and then this magnet here changes frequency as well to come together in a match because when the frequencies change, they're drawn together. So it's not a game, it's an energetic exchange. And your person is currently in the surrendering stages because you are so like, it feels like there's an inner battle where you're taking a step back and focusing on going to put yourself in a position to find someone new because you are lovable and you want love and you want the dream of love to become a reality. You wanted it to be with this person, but somehow it's just not aligning right now. So I feel like, you know, you are deciding to withdraw from this connection at this time and put yourself in a position to find love elsewhere. Um, so I feel this is the dynamic. Your person can feel you pulling away, just like you can feel them pulling away. There's an invisible cord between you both. And it says here, both of you are starting to give up on the need for control in this connection. It's not about giving up on the connection itself, but accepting that you cannot run from destiny. And that's what I feel with your person. They cannot keep running. They've got the rider there. So this means that um, they tend to always be on the run. But this horse has stopped. So I feel this person, they are currently in a state of awakening where they realize they can't fight this anymore. So I feel there has been a bit of an inner battle for both of you for different reasons, but this person is starting to really shift in their energy. There's still some sort of stuck energy here. I feel for some of you, because the devil card is present, this could be either an addiction or that need for control, because the devil card can indicate that uh, a person feels truly helpless to change a situation because they're not realizing they're trying to control the whole thing, you know? Um, and I feel this is something that your person has to let go of in order for things to really shift and change. But I do identify in their energy that they want to change. And there is elevation in their frequency as well. Uh, I'm being given this person thinks so highly of you. There is a message you sent, one of the last ones you sent. They look at it all the time. There's a nice one and a not so nice one is what I'm being given. And they look at both of them all the time. And they think, how did they get so... It's like, how do they get to this position? The polarities of the messages, they didn't intend for it to go this way. But they have to take accountability for their actions because it influenced how it went this way. Okay, so they've also got the rider. Now, this card basically means movement and improvement. There is some sort of movement from your person. This card uh, can indicate an arrival of a message. I am picking up on the fact that you sent them a message, it arrived, they read it, and they may not have responded, or they may not have responded in the way you hope for, but this is all about to change. This person is going to surprise you um, and send you uh, a message. I'm feeling action with this person, but also new information. So there's something this person hasn't told you, but it feels like something they've never told anyone. Let's see what that is. Um, Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Virgo? I mean, it could be for some of you, not all of you, of course, but it could be that this person has been functioning with addiction. So it doesn't have to be that, but the devil card is present, so it can indicate that um, there's something there on that, uh, and they're trying to resolve it, rise above it, and process it, heal from it. Uh, for some of you, 
We've got the strength card. This person is learning to love themselves. Okay, strength card eight is the number of the self. The strength card can indicate there is a level of self-loathing that this person had to overcome. I definitely felt that at the beginning of your reading, but I need a little bit more. Strength card is like courage. They're striking up the courage to message you because they're not sure how you're going to take it after everything that went down. Let me see. I want to see deeper. Uh, Knight of Swords, they're going to tell you they're making some lifestyle changes. I believe them on that, okay? Uh, there is going to be a flurry of messages. So it's not just going to be one. It's going to be several. Maybe it's because you're not going to message them back after the first one. But I feel there's a flurry of messages in and around this person. And I feel this person, um, they're reacting from a situation of their past before they even met you I'm being given they've always been on the run interesting that we've also got like a rider come through really in the knight of swords but it's like they're stopping okay I'm being given a song right now suddenly okay I'm only being given that <laughs> that word in this song suddenly okay it's a very famous song by hmm Billy Ocean. Yeah. And um, I'm not being given anything else with that song. Just suddenly, it just burst from nowhere. So it could be suddenly they're going to message you or maybe there is some sort of lyric that's contained in that song that represents your twin flame connection in some way. Please apply it to your situation. Could literally mean that you're going to hear that song in the next coming weeks that indicates movement in your twin flame connection, a message coming in. Uh, so listen out for that song. I want to find out why... There is a separation period here. Whoa. Okay, very volatile energy there. Uh, the Sun card, ego, okay, but also an awakening needed to happen. The Sun card is all about awakening. It's all about flourishing, thriving. It's about being vulnerable. As you can see, that little uh, newborn babe there on the horse, it represents being vulnerable and open, feeling exposed, emotions, unconditional love. It just feels a lot okay there need, has to be more than that though let me go a little bit deeper can you show me a little bit deeper what else what else what's going on here knight of swords okay so i'm being given that i'm not to communicate this with this reading i'm being given that this communication will only be for your ears my beautiful virgo so as and when this person decides to let you know they're going to let you know um I'm to step away from the energy. It's not often that my guides say back off. That's that's private, but it does occur sometimes. Um, so I feel this person, uh, if you can see the way the reading looks to me, you know, uh, the sun card and the knight of swords, they're coming back. Okay. But is that enough? Because they may be coming back, but you may be gone. Because when I touch your cards, I'm also hearing a very famous song by Miley Cyrus, uh, I Can Buy My Own Flowers. Okay, um, yeah, so yeah, there is a lot to unpick in this. They're not just going to get a free ride back into your life, they need to take accountability. I mean, swords indicate this person's going to be honest, they're going to tell you something that is true about them. We have the Knight of Wands, okay, and we also have the Three of Coins. Now, I'll pull a card on this energy because I would say this person, although they are trying to make a difference in their life, they're still not there yet. Knight of Wands tells me they are in a very physical energy. They're highly attracted to you, uh, but they are emotionally avoidant. It means they're here today, gone tomorrow. They come in strong, but there's something here about that Three of Pentacles that tells me that it is not a solid foundation that they're offering for a relationship. Um, now, for some people, people uh, think that, you know, Three of Pentacles is a third party situation. So uh, it doesn't mean they've got somebody else. It can mean external influences in this connection. So let me just pull a quick card. Can you please clarify this Three of Pentacles for my beautiful Virgo? What do they need to know about this? We've got the Five of Cups. This person has loved and lost before they met you. There's a lot of regret surrounding this. Uh, this person was not looking for love when they first met you. They may have been closing out a situation with someone else. Or, uh, I mean, for some of you, this person could 
I'm getting two energies. One is they um, fall short of saying how they feel. They rarely can access words to articulate their feelings and they get overwhelmed. So therefore they back off. That's one energy I've got coming through. But the other one is grief. This is a card of sorrow. Okay, so I feel uh, this person, they regret disappointing you, letting you down. But I feel there's an energy here that they need to process something that really was upsetting for them. I just heard spill salt, spill sorrow. Okay, spill salt, spill sorrow. That is a saying, right? I think it is. Um, spill salt, spill sorrow. So something that, if you think about salt, it hurts when it goes in a wound, but ultimately it's healing, right? Um, spill salt, spill sorrow. They're going to tell you about something that is paining them their whole life. There's something that goes deeper with this person that I'm not allowed to connect to, but that five of cups there tells me that there's loss in this person's world. It could be something from childhood, because I do feel childhood influences here with this person emulating a cycle. But I also get this feeling that they've felt abandoned or unloved and they have no love for themselves. So they've had to learn that. This card can be an abandonment issue card. Um, but also I feel there is an energy here. It's like they put love on the back burner or they just couldn't even think about love. They just weren't about it. But then love arrived. That's maybe what that song by Billy Ocean means, Suddenly. Uh, but I can't, I don't know the lyrics. I don't really know that song. It's not my kind of song. But um, yeah, please apply it to your situation. Um, I would say, though, Knight of Wands, this person is transitory right now. They're not emotionally available. I think I mentioned that. And we've got the Three of Pentacles. I just wanted to see if there was someone else. But that Five of Cups tells me no. It could be that um, they find it hard to open up, but also I feel there was someone before you who either may have broken this person's heart and they were just so closed off to romance or love and then they had feelings for you and they just thought it's going to go the same way, okay? So I feel this person with that three of pentacles, they're planning to come back into your life, that's for sure, okay? They're trying to surrender to the union. They don't want to run anymore but old habits die hard. I feel like they're missing a step. Okay, let me see. I feel like they're missing the healing step. <laughs> they're kind of like avoiding still. Before we move on to the energy, can you please show me? Yeah, two of wands, the waiting game. That's what that card is right there. So can you and your person be back together? The answer is absolutely. Uh, you have a lot of cards that indicate that you will be drawn back together for a conversation that's really honest, raw, and exposing, where answers are given. But the Two of Wands does highlight that there is still a bit of a wait. Okay, I hate giving that message myself. I cannot give you the cards. I shuffle the cards. They pop out. I have to give you the message that is real. I'm not just going to make something up or tell you something that perhaps you really want to hear deep down. I have to give you the honest truth of it. So, I mean, even two of wands, if you look up the meaning in the card, it's to wait. And we've also got the waiting game as your outcome energy. So there's still a bit of a stalemate here. Yes, there are feelings. This person is very, um, they're very passionate. I'm getting an energy. They're emotionally avoidant, but it's more intimacy that they are avoiding, okay? But the key to unlocking all of this is this piece of information that they have never told anyone before. Once they confide in you with that, and maybe they have before, but they're gonna go deeper on that. When they do that, that's the key to unlocking all of this. And they can really make great strides to moving forward towards being in a union with you, okay? But that card, waiting game. It's still in a cycle of repeat right now. So, you know, make your own decisions on this, my beautiful Virgo. But it says here, how long will you continue to wait? If you find you're not receiving what you want from your twin, it's time to practice self-love and walk away. And that's something that you are doing right now. Self-love. You're learning more about yourself. You're going deeper. You know, the page of cups is to be open-hearted, which is what you have at your protagonist energy. You were open-hearted. And I feel like there's an innocence about the love that you offer this person. Very playful, very flirtatious. But now it's time to give that intimacy to yourself, to learn more about yourself. So I feel that 
right now, you cannot wait for a person who has their own journey to discover. And we've got the sun card here as well as the anchor. There needs to be an awakening, which came out earlier, an awakening, but also emotional grounding in this connection to feel secure because whatever has gone on with this person that you're dealing with, they do not feel secure in their emotions for themselves. There is some level of, um, for some of you, there's also codependency there, but I feel the majority of you, this is uh, an indication there's some self-loathing going on and it also feels like whoever you're dealing with they feel like they haven't got the building blocks of life in place right now to offer security to anyone let alone themselves that may be a conversation that comes through there as well but the anchor this is all about emotional stability but it's also an indication that you know there is going to be a period where both of you stop and pause and kind of like drift for a bit. That is your position right now. If you think about a ship when it anchors, it's still on the high seas. It's still kind of drifting. It's in one place, you know, but it's anchored. So I feel right now you and your person are paused on purpose to focus on your healing, your journey, to learn more about yourself, but also uh, to learn that your happiness does not tie up with another person. I mean, the anchor also indicates enduring Okay, feeling stuck in this, but enduring it. And, you know, it feels like there is a longevity about your connection. And it will flourish and thrive at some point, but there has to be an awakening. And I feel because you've got all the fire in your cards, I feel like you have awakened to a certain degree and your person is playing catch up. And only then will there be movement. But your overarching energy tells me that there can be a happy ever after in this connection, but your person needs to highlight because the, the sun is ultimately like a spotlight. There has to be a period where you identify where you're drifting or feeling stuck in this. And only then can you both truly overcome the obstacle. It's going to be different for every twin flame connection. Let's see your funnel cards here. We've got the devil card. We've got the death card. We've got the seven of coins. We've got the page of wands and we've got the queen of swords. So I would say you and this person, you're going to repeat another cycle where this person comes in strong. It feels like it's going somewhere and then it doesn't. It stops, but then it transforms and then it's savable because the seven of pentacles is to save. Let me give you each card. We've got the devil card there, which is to highlight, you know, some people think the devil card is an evil card, but it's not. Every single one of us reaches the devil card on our path and journey through life. It means we've got stuck in a toxic pattern or a cycle of repeat that we feel bound to that we cannot get out of. And we need to put a spotlight on that devil card energy, which means we have to identify where we're feeling stuck. And only then can we truly change our situation. But the devil card... It indicates that some of you, this is like stuck in cycle of repeat. For some of you, it's addictions or a certain pattern that keeps being emulated. Uh, it can be fear. It can be amplified fear that this person or you feel stuck in because how can you trust that when you surrender to this union with your person that they're not going to just disappear or they're not just going to repeat a cycle and leave you bruised again? So I feel... There's a very complex energy about this connection where it's not going to be so easy to resolve it. However, it is resolvable because you have that seven of pentacles. Now, we've also got the death card, which means something stops. OK, so I mean, the devil card is temptation to be drawn together, magnetized. Both of you kind of feel it's going to go the same way. You kind of feel the same energy, but you're tempted to be with each other. So there is an indication here, the temptation needs to stop until you're both at a position where you can offer a healthier relationship. Also, because they are showing up with the Knight of Wands energy, I feel this is more applied to their energy right now. I feel with the Death card, this is the end of a cycle because you're stepping back. Queen of Swords is like looking to the future. So I feel a lot of you beautiful Virgos are turning your back on the past and saying, no, step up or step out. I'm not about it. You're not wasting your time anymore. But that death card, it represents an opportunity to transform. Remember, there's no such thing as a true ending of something, only a transformation into something else. The death card partnered with the devil card indicates 
an end of old habits, breaking cycles that have kept us bound in unhealthy energy. So I do see this as positive. However, the energy I'm picking up for your whole reading, if I'm truly honest with you, my beautiful Virgo, I see this person reaching out. It's a flirty message. Both of you are attempted to kind of emulate this cycle again, and I see a repeat. And then I see an end to the repeat. So I would say there's one more cycle with this person, and then they truly snap out of it. But I would also say, do not wait, because when the moment is right, the universe will draw you back together when it is right to do so, when both parties have spiritually aligned. Now, we also have seven of coins. Is this savable? The answer is yes, but it's going to be hard work. Seven of pentacles means patience, hard work, delayed outcomes. But, uh, you know, it does mean it is savable. Seven of pentacles means waiting. Okay, if you know the Seven of Pentacles on the traditional Rider Waite Tarot, there's a figure who has invested all that time, energy into a money bush, and only one pentacle comes out. So it may feel like you're not really making any headway on this connection, but you really are. But there will be a major breakthrough later on. It's just not now. Okay. Now, also, I feel this is the crossroad cards. So I feel right now you need this tune to change because you're about to fling that record right out of your collection. So I really get an energy here that, you know, you are trying to manifest a better outcome, but you are in a period, my beautiful Virgo, of admitting what is no longer for you because you can't do this anymore. So I feel a decision needs to be made. However, I want you to be aware the trajectory that your twin flame connection is on right now, it will be savable. But right now, it's next six weeks, it's stalemate. It's a waiting game. But as I said, you're getting busy living. You're not waiting for your person. Now we have the page of wands. Page of Wands, pages bring news. There's a message. I definitely see your person messaging, and I feel it's going to be a bold, flirtatious message. Part of you may be feeling like, excuse me, what now? I don't hear from you, and then suddenly I get this message like nothing has happened. But I feel this person will acknowledge. They're not going to just sweep it under the carpet, because I feel like this person's been really ruminating on having the courage to write what they need to say and mean what they say in a message to you. But the page of wands tells me it's kind of like flirtatious. This person's going to tell you also that they know that you are their soulmate. I feel like they haven't quite grasped twin flame and soulmate, okay? So this person, they're aware that you are a soulmate or that you are someone who they cannot stop thinking about. There is a bond that they cannot explain right now and that they, you know, physically are very attracted to you. There's a lot of like physical energy, but I would say, because there's so many wands here, I would say this person is still emotionally avoidant, especially, you know, they are running away from intimacy still, okay? And we've also got the Queen of Swords. Now, the Queen of Swords is to surrender to conversation, but it's also to cut the crap, right? It's really about getting to the heart of the matter. It's really about uh, turning around and saying, okay, I'm willing to have a conversation here in cold, hard truth. So I feel this is a straightforward conversation that you will both have in the future. But also I feel it's a very protected kind of disconnected conversation where you're being logical, acknowledging that there are certain differences that both of you have to overcome before you can come together. I'm going to pull a card on it because all I can see right now is waiting and having a conversation, but that will be some progress. Let me see afterwards. Can you show me a little bit afterwards? Ten of Swords. Yeah, it ends one more time. Okay, so it's a difficult cycle. Okay, I, I keep picking up on an end of something. It. I mean, I feel it's not truly the end because of the rest of the cards that you got. So let me just... Yeah, the awakening. It has to be separate. There has to be an awakening um, because to be open and exposed in terms of emotions feels vulnerable to one or both of you. But I feel, you know, the sun is always the most positive card in the deck, the happy ever after. And what I feel for you and your person, it's like there's another round and it goes the same way. You know, you come together and then you part and then it's then when things truly awaken and transform. And I wish I could give you another message, my beautiful Virgo, but even in a different deck, the same message is coming out. So 
I would say protect your energy, focus on your own path. This is all about you. It's your alone time to discover more about you, what you want, what you certainly do not want. And when the moment is right, this person is going to reach out. I see a message. I see communication here, but it may not be the communication you want to hear. Okay. I'm facing my shadows and I want to change. Hurting you was never my intention. I'm trying to move from cycles. Please believe in us. Please give me time to open up. Isn't this interesting? Some of you may be dealing with someone who has strong Libra in their chart. Okay. Um, because I did a Libra reading and they got exactly the same cards at the end. Okay. So really random, but uh, it could also be that I'm being highlighted that this person, the inconsistency, Libra is represented by the scales. Okay. So it can be that right now there is a misaligned energy about you both, but you can find a solution, but there has to be accountability, honest, open conversation. And most importantly, someone needs to take accountability for their actions because those actions actually had a consequence in this union. So we've got this card first. Okay. And it says here, I'm facing my shadows and I want to change. So yes, they do. Okay. Because they do have those cards of surrendering. They have the card of, um, the rider, which means, you know, sudden improvement and movement, but they also have the knight of wands, which is transitory energy. Someone who's very passionate, excited by you, excited to see you, feel you, smell you, be with you, but they can't sustain the emotion because of whatever it is that they're stuck in. The emotion is still there, but they have to remove themselves because they keep getting in too deep. Now we've also got hurting you was never my intention. And I do feel that is true. There's no malicious cards here. The outcome indicates both of you are feeling a bit stuck. There's a stalemate energy here. The devil card is not present 100% in their pile. So that tells me it wasn't malicious. Um, I'm trying to move from cycles. So yes, I do feel this person's trying to break out of a cycle of repeat. And um, they want to get out of their own way as well. Please believe in us. This connection is worth the wait. I mean, Virgo. I feel like you've waited a long time, but also I feel it's very important to underline that nobody should wait. Okay. Because the universe will draw you back together when the frequencies align and please give me time to open up. Now there is something here that this person has not talked about. As I said, it's off limits to me. If they haven't confided in you just yet, they will tell you this and whatever it is, it unlocks everything going forward. Okay. So, um, yeah, I hope something resonates in that reading for someone out there because, uh, I feel it's quite precise. So if it does, um, thank you so much. I'm sure grateful. You know what? I should have said it right at the beginning of your reading randomly, I was being shown like a horse and carriage, right? Which of course represents marriage. Uh, and I thought oh, random, but I don't like to influence a reading with any of the images I'm given before a reading, because these could be just passing images, you know, it could be for me, uh, you know, of course not a horse and carriage, but, uh, you know, it could be, um, something that's relevant to somebody who passes by my window. For example, I pick up energy all over the place, but I was scrying. I do like a little, uh, meditation just before your reading. And I saw a horse and carriage. Okay. And you've got the horse here and also here's the carriage. So really random, but I mean, the carriage can represent the chariot card, moving on from obstacles, uh, commitment, insight, but there has a lot of work to be done first. Uh, it can also indicate, because as you can see there, uh, the carriage, all the windows are blocked out. So it can be privacy, something that is private. Once it is exposed, then both of you can move on. And I feel it's something to do with this person. Okay. Uh, for some of you, it's distance. Could be that you're at a distance from each other. We also have the clock. Now this represents destiny, divine timing, but it's also the waiting game. So I would say, you know, keep being the wonderful you. I know it's painful. I'm sending you a huge hug out there, my beautiful Virgo. It's often a very isolating and lonely journey. And I know that when I met my twin, I just come out of a very damaging experience with a karmic. And that person before my twin absolutely broke me. I was a shell of myself. 
okay? And I certainly did not want love because I was so hurt, so destroyed by something before I met my twin. And of course, the universe sent in my twin as I was going through, or should I say avoiding, because actually I went out partying all the time after that experience and I was numbing my feelings. I certainly was not looking for love. And suddenly the universe sent in my twin and I was like, oh, and as soon as that person arrived, it was really interesting because I hear my guides, right? And I was actually numbing uh, my sort of spiritual gifts at the time as well because I was just scared of them. And uh, I heard a voice on the night that I met my twin and I just knew. And I was like, whoa, what, what is this? Um, but I avoided my person. You know, I pushed them away. I mean, on that night, we got to know each other. That person came towards me and I was like, no, 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 not interested. Um, pushed them away. The universe made sure we met again and made sure that we came together at different events, bumped into each other. I was like, always like, no, this is not happening. And it wasn't because I didn't want to be with the person. It was because I was so broken. I had no love for myself that I couldn't offer any love to my person. Just couldn't. And also, I was afraid that this person that I felt even more love for than anybody I'd ever met before, which was like unfathomable at the time, I thought that person could leave me. They could literally finish me off and destroy me completely. So I was scared and I pushed my twin away. And eventually they took a step back, which is the twin flame separation. We had the separation and of course uh, you're drawn together each time to try and make it work. And then the twin who is the runner becomes the chaser, vice versa. And then you come together in union. It is not a game. It exists and it is powerful, but it's painful. So please take it as it resonates. And finally, the rune that you have here is the potential rune. So yes, there is potential in this connection, but it feels like uh, the marking of an ending will bring a beginning. And I feel there is an energy here of owning up to misunderstandings and mistakes as well. What else am I getting? I'm getting something else. I'm just hearing milestone, milestone. Okay, so I can't really connect that to this reading, so I'll have to leave that there. Maybe it means something to you, milestone. Okay, so uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, my beautiful Virgo, and love and light.